Hey guys, this is Sarah here. So this is the NCLEX RN 2019 ATI Comprehensive Review. This is part 6D in which we will go over the musculoskeletal disorders. Section 5, musculoskeletal disorders. So we're going to start talking about arthritis. Arthritis is inflammation of the joint. Here are three different types of arthritis. First, we're going to talk about gout. That's the easiest. Gout is, like we said, arthritis, so inflammation. It comes from too much purines. So what foods have purines? The main one, organ meats. There's also sardines and spinach, but remember organ meats. So some risk factors, obviously, if you have too much purines and excessive alcohol. So gout could come from too much alcohol or purines. You're going to diagnose it by your serum, uric acid, and interventions are going to be like this. During attacks, you're going to have bed rest. You want to encourage fluids. That's the main thing because it helps prevent an attack. And you want to limit purine foods. Signs and symptoms are going to be pain and inflammation in one of the small joints. So the main one, just remember the great toe, like the big toe. That's the classic example, pain and inflammation in the big toe. Okay, so now we're going to go on to osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis. These are kind of similar, but they're very different. So osteoarthritis, you want to think of wear and tear. Like as someone gets older, they've been abusing their joints and using them. Risk factors are going to be people who are prone to wear and tear, like aging, an athlete who keeps using it, obesity because they're putting a lot of pressure on it, etc. As opposed to rheumatoid arthritis, is an autoimmune disorder. The risk factors are going to be someone young to middle age, family history, stress, or female. Both can be diagnosed the same way, through x-ray, MRI, ESR, or CRP, they both show inflammation. Sign and symptoms, so they're going to be a little bit different. Obviously, they're both going to show stiffness, pain, etc. But with osteoarthritis, remember, it's a wear and tear, so you're going to have pain when you're moving it, when you're wearing and tearing it, and you're going to have pain worse after you use it. For rheumatoid arthritis, it's an autoimmune, it's going to be pain at rest when you're not using it. Osteoarthritis, like we said, it's a wear and tear. So if you wear one hand, your other hand's not going to swell also. It's only going to be the hand that's involved. As opposed to rheumatoid arthritis, is a bilateral inflammation. Rheumatoid arthritis also generally affects the small joints, like the hands and toes. And osteoarthritis affects like the big ones that you wear and tear, like your knees and your hips, etc. Um, interventions for both of them are kind of going to be the same. Ice, heat, pain medication, rest, PT assistive devices and medications that lower the inflammation like NSAIDs, steroids, etc. So now we go on to fracture. What a fracture is, it's a break in the bone. There are different types. There's closed, open, another name for open is compound, spiral. I wouldn't really focus on these. I never seen an NCLEX test on this. And then we go on to interventions for fracture. This you should know. First of all, you want to assess the neurovascular status, which to help you remember, think of six P's. Pain, pressure, paralysis, pallor, pulselessness, and paresthesia. And you want to compare bilaterally on both sides. You want to monitor the skin for changes of temperature. And this is the main one. Whenever they think of fracture, you want to think of fat embolism. That a piece could come off and could black. And those signs and symptoms you're going to have to know. Confusion, tachypnea, and petechia. You also want to monitor for compartment syndrome. That's important also, especially if you're going to put a cast on it. And these signs and symptoms are going to be pain not relieved by medication, cyanosis, tingling, paralysis, but mainly pain not relieved by medication. And you want to maintain proper body alignment. So what I would know from this is when you think of a fracture, it's a break in the bone. And remember the six P's, fat embolism and the signs and symptoms and compartment syndrome and signs and symptoms. So if you have a patient complaining after a fracture and you put on a cast and pain's not relieved by any medication, then think of compartment syndrome. So now we go on to cast traction and, and external fixation devices. So what these are, these are supposed to maintain alignment of the bone, to immobilize it. So you can't move it out of place. Cast, we all know, traction is just like a pulling force so that it stays in place. There's a few different types, skin and skeletal. So when you think of skin, just think of Buck's traction. That's type of pulling force to maintain immobilization, like we see in the picture. Skeletal is the same thing, it just uses pins and wires inserted through the skin. Um, external fixation devices is also done for the same reason. It's just that it uses pins and wires outside of the body, as you see in that picture. For this, you want to assess pulse, vascular status. You want to maintain property body alignment. And this is important to remember, the weight should be free hanging. They like to test on that. You want to monitor skin pressure points, strengthening exercise for the uninjured areas, and pin care, but do not adjust the pin. That's the job of the factor. And give medication for pain. So osteoporosis versus osteomyelitis. Osteoporosis is a thinning of the bones which causes painful fractures. Some causes of are women over 65, Asian, Caucasians, family history, estrogen deficiency, sedentary lifestyle, smoking and alcohol intake. 
Final symptoms are short height, fractures, decreased bone mass. Interventions are you want to give them medication called biphosphonates, tell them to do weight bearing exercises with dumbbells, calcium, vitamin D supplements, calcitonin, estrogen agonists, and they should stop smoking. The main thing is full precautions because they're at risk for falling. And then osteomyelitis is a bone infection. Osteoporosis is something that comes more as you age, and osteomyelitis could be by any age, it's a bone infection. Some causes are diabetes, hemodialysis, drug injections, poor blood supply, recent trauma. Signs and symptoms are bone pain, fever, general feeling, bad, local swelling, red, warm. It's going to be diagnosed through a bone biopsy, CBC, ESR, etc. And interventions, you want to give them antibiotics because it's a bone infection. So osteoporosis is more like the breaking down of the bone and it's going to cause fractures. And you want to put them on full precaution. And osteomyelitis is just a bone infection, so you want to give them antibiotics. Total joint arthroplasty. So this is basically replacing a joint. It could be a hip, knee, etc. Causes that you would need this is impaired mobility, uncontrolled pain related to osteoarthritis, and trauma. Intervention. So this that you should know. For a hip, you want to keep an abductor pillow in place in bed and do not flex the hip more than 90 degrees. So don't bend at the waist, etc. So I hint to remember that you're gonna need an abductor pillow and not an adductor pillow is because an ab, think of your abs, they're so much far away, and ad, it's so much easier to add fat. So you want an ab doctor pillow, something that's so much far away, you really want your abs. And then for a knee, you're gonna maintain continuous passive motion, and you want a machine to promote joint mobility. And then for both of them, you want to assess pain, extremity shortening, nerve vascular status, a septic technique for wound care, monitor for infection, you want to ambulate the day of the surgery, give them pain medication, and PT is probably going to come. Next, we go on to amputations. Amputation is a removal of a part of the body. So the different types, it could be above or below the knee, toe, midfoot, etc. Causes the vascular disease, severe crushing of tissue, tumors, osteomyelitis, a thermal injury, etc. So interventions, assess neurovascular statics and psychosocial status. So with amputations, you like to ask two stuff. Psychosocial status is very important because they're losing part of their body and they're never gonna look or feel the same. And the second thing, you wanna manage phantom limb pain. This is a real pain, it is not fake, and you wanna treat it, give them medication. You wanna monitor for complications like hemorrhage, infection, aseptic dressing technique. So you wanna wrap the residual limb in figure eight elastic bandages after surgical dressing removed. And you wanna give meds and rehab therapy and they should go to support group. Stay tuned for part 6E in which we'll discuss the endocrine disorders. Please subscribe and like, thank you.